Hi, I'm Amy Baxter, editor of Retail Leader, and welcome to Trend Talk. Every week on Trend Talk, we identify a retail trend and give it a deep dive with an industry insider. This week, we're going data crazy with the CEO of 1010 Data, Ina Kuznetsova. 1010 Data recently found some interesting retail trends on the back-to-school shopping behavior and changes in the grocery sector. So welcome, Ina. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you very much for inviting me, Amy. It's a pleasure to join you. So let's jump right in with the back-to-school shopping season, which just happened. Um, What's different about this year's back-to-school shopping compared to last year? It's always a very interesting event in retail to watch because uh, it brings it close to home. Most of us have kids or nieces or friends with kids, and we know that it's very personal in many cases, getting that backpack for the first day in school. (laughs) One of the really interesting uh, thing to mention about this year is that we have seen the back-to-school season delay. In the past, uh, the most of back-to-school lift happened in July. So looking at pre-pandemic 2019, uh, July got a 69% lift to the e-commerce spending for back-to-school items. In 2020, it was just 21%. Mm. And in August uh, of uh, 2020, 19, it was only four, right? So we go from 69 lift to four. In 2020, we went from 21 down to 18, much slower difference. Mm -hmm. Now let us look at 21. In 21, in July, we had a 25% lift, a healthy uplift in sale. In August, we saw 21%. So the the difference between uplifts in July and August was much, much smaller, right? Mm -hmm. Compare 69% to 4% and 25% to 29%. What does it tell us about people, right? It tells us that uh, consumers delayed spending. And it's likely that there was certain uncertainty about uh, Delta virus Mm -hmm. and whether the schools will open or stay close or still remote or stay hybrid. And uh, moms and pops delayed the spending and were figuring out what to do with all this uh, preparation for school. Yeah, that's super interesting. I, I, the Delta variant definitely, I think, especially over the summer, was making a lot more noise than now that we're kind of into the school year a little bit. Um, so how does it compare in terms of spend? Like, are people actually spending more this year, even though they're spending a little bit later? We see people spending more uh online because that's clearly the result of Mm -hmm. 2020 conditioning us to spend more online. Uh, The spending overall uh, really depends on the category you look like. You see some of the categories that were clear winners in 2020 Mm -hmm. and maybe not that much of a win in 21. And you see other tiers that did differently. And we can talk about this uh, in a few minutes if you're interested. Yeah. What are... um... I guess some of the hot, the top school supply tiers and what are parents actually buying? In 2020, the main spending went into the laptops and electronics category. Mm -hmm. And when you say it, people say, oh, that's quite logical. After first few months of in-home schooling, I figured out my kids cannot use my work computing for in-home schooling, actually have to do some work on it. So we need to get Junior his or her own uh, Mm -hmm. laptop. And the teachers said, well, I can use the home PC for preparing for classes, but now that computer is used by my kid and I really need a full-time laptop, preferably a better one, to prepare for uh, this uh, online class teaching. So laptops got a huge boost last year. Mm-hmm. In, uh, in the last year, in 2020, um, in August, we saw 122% growth in online purchase of laptops. And wow. that says a lot, right, about the category. This year, it was uh, 23% down from the last year. Now, 23% down from this huge 122% growth still means doubling of what we were spending on laptops in 29. So that's mm-hmm. not, not a bad news overall. But that category did not get that huge lift anymore. And when you think about it logically, I think you realize that over the last year, all of us have set our work from home environments. So, Mm -hmm. well, of course, we have some students going to colleges and we have some kids just starting school or starting middle school and they need a new laptop. It was not that same sweeping change as what we experienced. 
But then there is another interesting category, mm -hmm. which had a very opposite picture. This is the backpack. Mm -hmm. In the backpacks uh, in 2020, we saw the decline of 27% of buying for the back to school season. Mm -hmm. And again, it was quite understandable. If you most of your school is done from home, if it's all remote education or maybe hybrid for one or two hours in school, you don't need a new backpack. Mm -hmm. So some backpacks were still purchased, but in general, that category was significantly down. This year, we've seen kids going back in person. And we saw 89% increase year to year on the backpack spending. Wow. Another category that really signifies that a uh, switch was uh, higher spending on calculators. We saw uh, the growth, healthy growth of spending on pens and uh, notebooks and pencils, uh, certain 14% in each of those categories. But in some of those areas, last year growth, like notebooks, was much higher year to year, which again signifies the fact that people were stuck in their home office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've heard. Um about the backpack sales. It's been in a couple of headlines that backpacks are just huge this year. And I think some of that too is like, now that you're out of the house, people really want to express themselves. We're seeing this in like an apparel too. And yeah. backpacks are one area where kids can kind of express their individuality with a little bit of style in school supplies. So absolutely. And do not discount the emotional uplift you get when you get a new backpack, which means you're finally getting out of the house so you can mm -hmm. see the friends. You don't get the same emotional uplift from a pen or a, no or a notebook. So buying a new backpack is a big celebration of going back to school and going in person. Yeah. So I want to go back um, to what you said about more online shopping. Do you think retailers were prepared for a surge in online shopping for the back to school season? And what have you seen uh, retailers do differently online? We've seen uh, some retailers investing more effort in making their sites usable and their deliveries reliable. And the clear winner among the big four, Amazon Direct, Amazon Marketplace, Walmart, and Target was mm -hmm. the Target. Target grew its online sales 53% year to year during the back uh, to school season. And they did it at the expense of Walmart and Amazon Direct that mm -hmm. declined a little bit year to year. Now, that decline should not be deceiving because last year Walmart grew 188% because last year was the year of Walmart. Last year was Walmart putting all this effort in making online shopping user-friendly, creating loyalty programs, creating delivery improvements, and of course, experiencing a high boost. So mm -hmm. this year, this uh, slight decline, they, they got 39% less growth, still signifies a much, much higher number from what they have experienced uh, from before COVID. Um, and of course, uh, Amazon Marketplace uh, remains uh, the winner in overall spending. Uh, over 60% of all online back-to-school shopping is done on Amazon Marketplace, mm -hmm. uh, which, again, just highlights the value of convenience and use and our familiarity with the channel, right? We all spend a lot on Amazon, or most mm -hmm. of us do, mm -hmm. and back-to-school naturally falls into that same category. Yeah. What do you think is behind the shift from Walmart to Target a little bit? I've heard anecdotally... Um, you know, Target or Walmart with some supply chain struggles or staffing struggle, struggles that going into the store in Walmart is a little bit of a messier of experience than it used to be. Um, that's just an anecdotal thing I've heard. But, you know, did Target just catch up a little bit to Walmart online? You know, they've been really far ahead in their app for many years. Yeah. So what, what's behind that change? I think there is a combination of factors. Uh, first of all, all retailers have experienced triple pressures this year. Rising costs of labor and less availability, much higher costs of doing business. Just think of the cost of cleaning stores and uh, maintaining schedules and mm -hmm. maintaining security. And the third very big pressure, of course, is the supply. And supply and shipping crisis has been hitting all areas of our lives. So we hear about over 60 ships standing near mm -hmm. Los Angeles Long Beach port, unable to burst. We hear about ports not being able to process all the containers, creating backlogs. Uh, we hear about delays. And of course, each of those delays impact consumer products. And now as we go not only into 
back to school season for retailers will go into the high season for Christmas shipping, right? Mm -hmm. to, to get the consumer goods from China for our stores in end of November, December, you have to ship them out of Asia in August, September. This uh, delivery and shipping crisis only starts impacting things more. So uh, different retailers handle things differently. You hear about big retailers chartering their own ships to provide uh, that work. Uh, you think of, you also hear about uh, more and more retailers using what's near and dear to my heart, using data mm -hmm. to optimize <laughs> how they sell, personalize their promotions, uh, segment their customers better, uh, providing better analysis of what sells and what does not sell. And I think that we will see some leapfrogging in different retailers as they implement those more data-driven approaches and personalize their promotions and uh, analyze their stock ins better. And I, my prediction is that it will still continue over the next 12 mm -hmm. months just because of the complexity and the whole scope of the problem. Mm -hmm.